Welcome to the Glass Lab podcast, where we talk all things product development. It's our goal every month to introduce you to the people, ideas, and development tools that are shaping the hardware products we all use every day. Thank you, everyone, for coming back again to the Glass Labs podcast. I'm Grant Chapman, the CEO here at Glassboard. With me, I've got Ben Edinger, our director of products, back for another episode. And today we've got Sunny with us. We've got Cindy Ballardo, the CEO, and Drew Jarvis, their CMO. So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hey, Thanks for excited having us. to be here. Yeah, no, we've Always. Dr- Ben and I have been waiting a long time to have you guys on the show to be able to share the story with you guys because it's been a super fun road. Yeah, I feel like we're in the most exciting spot to be doing this now. Like 100%. it would have always been cool, but like <laughs> now, especially. Yep. No, that's, that's all fantastic. So I think we want to start out with, let's get some history on you guys and where you guys started before we get into what Sunny is and, and how we've all been working together. Yeah. So, so do you want to start? Rock, paper, scissors. Sure. <laughs> I can start us off. So yeah, for my background, um, graduated from Oklahoma University with environmental studies, pre-med, and really found my passion for environmental products and really specifically the menstrual cup as a way to go low waste. And I really wanted to lower my ecological footprint personally. So this was all kind of a personal journey and starting to share that with friends and just learning, you know, what is all attached to periods, like specifically just advocacy and laws, things like that. And I think what really catapulted all of this was specifically going with my friends and talking about a potential project. And we really wanted to just educate about periods and menstrual cups. So we actually ended up doing a project in Northern India where we talked to like over 800 women about their periods and, you know, provided them a a safe place for the very first time to open up, share a little bit about their journey, um, to talk about periods, menstrual cups, and then Honestly, we just learned so much more, as you could imagine, like the taboo around this subject. It's just not talked about very much in any society. Right. And I think I was going to bring up that, like, I know that India is actually one of the places that is a little bit more taboo than even other places, yeah. even though we think it's very open in the U.S., but I still learned a ton along the lines with this project <laughs> with you guys about things I didn't know that I thought should be obvious and should be out in the mm-hmm. open and talked yeah. about, but no one does. Yeah. Um, and now Ben and I are the weird guys at dinner parties. Like, what do you think about menstruation? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was one thing I think we said to you in the beginning. Like, by the end of this, you're going to be very comfortable talking about periods. Yeah. And here we are. No, was, yeah. I specifically remember uh, a flight to Vegas that we were both on. It was early <laughs> on. And so it was full conceptualization. And we're yeah. just talking through everything. But we're across the aisle from one another with a notepad talking just openly about everything. <laughs> oh and my gosh. I didn't look around to see what looks what we were getting, but I'm sure they were there. Oh, I'm sure they were good. But yeah, yeah that, was, that was a good time. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, it's, it's really been, it became global and bringing that back, ta- teaching in like clubs on campus and then just to friends. And lo and behold, a pitch competition showed up at my university that was about a new innovation. And we decided to, myself and my friends, apply for a new menstrual cup application because I know personally, and of course talking to many people, Um, have had trouble using the menstrual cup for the first time. Like there's just a really, really big learning curve. And personally, it took three period cycles to learn how to even use this thing. Right, like be comfortable using it. And to be really comfortable. And And I knew their benefits were there. It's just... Yeah, getting and how you started hurdle. with the problem as well. Exactly. You didn't have it in your mind, exactly. oh, this is what it should be. It was yeah. just Correct. there's a problem that exists. And exactly. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of how we started into the business world, pitch competition world, and made Menstrual Mates Inc. as it was um, way back in the day. And I moved to Indiana. Circumstances happened. Continued my startup journey and ended up getting connected to Glassboard LLC (laughs) through the grapevine and networking and found that they and you all kind of worked on product development and could take this to the next level. And that is where I got connected with Drew and I'll let her kind of tell her side of the story. Yeah, it's crazy (laughs) how we were kind of doing the same thing at the same time, just in different Mm -hmm. places. Um, But my senior year of high school at Fisher's High School, I entered into a business idea pitch competition. It was like the end of my senior year and I was like, why not? Nothing else to do. (laughs) (laughs) And so I started actually from problems. I just started like brainstorming, like what issues have I had? Um, I came across menstrual cups for the first time, thought they were pretty cool, decided to use one, had a similar problem as Cindy of like, I specifically remember... 
sitting in my bathroom with the door shut, like trying to put a menstrual cup in and my mom st- sitting outside and me like laughing, crying, like <laughs> what is happening? What is this? And she was like, what? Like, it sounds like a bloodbath in there. I was like, it kind of is, <laughs> like it kind of is. And um, that's what I know started my journey. I'm like, okay, there has to be a better way to do this. Started doing research, found out that uh, menstrual cups were first invented in the 1930s. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, there's nothing better out there at this point in 2018. So um, that became my idea for the pitch competition. I ended up winning that my senior year and then um, taking those funds and kind of being like, all right, I don't know what to do now. (laughs) Like if you give $25,000 to an 18 year old, like what do you, what do you think is going to (laughs) happen? I was just like, I don't know anything yet. Um, All I know is that I'm going to go to college and see what happens. Um, I ended up getting connected to uh, someone who then connected me to Ben And Ben, you were actually like my first business meeting that I had at like 18 years old. I think Um, at a sandwich shop or something on the west side of town. (laughs) Yes, I was so nervous and uh, met you at a sandwich shop and was like, here's my napkin idea of a product. Like, I don't know how this would actually work, but I have this money. Like, can you help me? Um, And then you were like, yeah, for sure. And then ended up deciding to pause on the project because I wanted to just go to college for a minute and see what that was like first. So in my sophomore year then at IU, I decided to reach back out to like the only person I'd had a business meeting (laughs) with, which was Ben and was like, hey, what you doing now? Um, And that's when you were at Glassboard. So then I had my second business meeting with Glassboard. (laughs) (laughs) Which I think it's, you mentioned that it's crazy that you two were doing the same thing at the same time, but not only that, you went to the, you both came to Glassboard independently and that's where you met, which is, I mean, a lot of serendipity in Mm -hmm. your all story, but that one is uh, definitely up there. Yeah, about a couple months into working with you all, you were like, hey, what are the odds? There's this other person with a startup around your age who wants to create a better menstrual cup. And I was like, no friggin' way. And I was like, (laughs) I can't work with them unless you work together because we all have conflicts. Like the worst thing I can do is not do anything. So I'm going to introduce you guys and make, well, if you guys play nice and we can do this together. Yeah. Um, And that was so, I guess Randy called me and he was like, hey, I've got another menstrual cup client. And I was like, ha ha, very funny. Like, what are the odds? (laughs) You know, we were like a, well, like a seven person design firm at the time in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm like, what are the odds that two people with this exact same product idea that is new Mm -hmm. that no one's innovated on in forever are calling us the same, like, you know, quarter or whatever. And yeah. lo and behold, we had two of them and I'm like, okay, <laughs> here you guys go. Meet yeah. each other. And we both said yes. Yeah. And it totally, it was so fun. It was so fun. Yeah. Oh, it, it's really been clicked. wild, right? Cause I think yeah. the, the hardest part for us is you guys have a problem, but not like I built this prototype or this thing. It was true. Like we have a problem mm-hmm. and we know the things about it. We don't like, we can mm-hmm. define the things about the problem that we think can be better but it was a blue ocean. There was like no defined direction yeah. for any one of us. And Ben and I can't try the product, mm-hmm. which I think right. is the other part yeah. that was so challenging from a development standpoint. That yeah. like we had to get really good at communicating of like, okay, explicitly, what does that feel like? Yeah. What does this mean? Right. Like, yeah, that was something we had to get very comfortable with very quickly, mm-hmm. whether it was like working with you all or pitching to investors who are largely people without periods. Mm-hmm. Um, and at like, you know, in our early 20s slash teens being like, this is a period, this is how it works. This is like how a menstrual cup feels. And yeah, mm-hmm. we got very comfortable very fast. And I feel so like that's the, the most disarming <laughs> yeah. thing too, is just going in full confidence, it not mm-hmm. being awkward for you yeah. and that translating to everyone and going, okay, we're just, yeah. we're talking about it now and it's mm-hmm. it's all normal. And we were told by uh, quite a few people, like women included, who were like, I just don't know if you're going to get anywhere with this because how are you going to convince a room full of men and non-menstruators that like what this problem is and that they need this, this product. Um, really? But I think we've done so it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And so it's interesting to me to hear that because as like a business person, my brain goes, okay, it's half of the population. Mm-hmm. And most of that population, you guys will know the stats use tampons because they're mm-hmm. easy to use, right? It's not because they're wonderful or they work perfect or all these things. It's because they're easy to use. Yeah. And you guys were trying to take the best part about that and mix it with all the benefits of a menstrual yeah. cup. And that was like the pitch from the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Even the idea and like, we have to make it easier to use and then people right. will adopt all the benefits of it. It's yeah. not like we're innovating some new benefit of the menstrual cup. We mm-hmm. just need to make it easy to use. Yeah. And it's shocking to me that that is such a visceral pushback. of like, oh, how are you going to convince them that this is a problem when the stats are there? Mm-hmm. And right? we actually, we've had several conversations over the years 
about timelines and I definitely want to get into that of like <laughs> when I first came to you all and this is my overly idealistic mindset but you being like all right we may have to go back and iterate a few times like the first prototype won't be it and I was like sure okay <laughs> we're gonna get it first try don't worry about it and I thought like you know minimal funds and minimal time would probably do the trick right. and here we are four years later yeah, so four Five years. Years. like four years later wow. um, with like a really, really awesome product. But had you told me four years ago it would take this long, I think you would have scared 18 year old me away. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And, and it that's, was, the, that's really the piece of it, which is you know, coming in one with a problem, right? Not not us going into an engineering problem. It was mostly a yeah. research and design yeah. effort initially. Um, and you own, you guys having the money from you know, that initial pitch that, mm -hmm. you, that you won. Um, and it was, I mean, Grant made the analogy earlier before we started recording of you, know, you put a coin in the slot to get to the next step. Mm -hmm. um, and it's what can we do? And then this very limited amount of hours that's yep. going to get you mm -hmm. to the, the step beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was like a, just a super cool part of the early days of the project. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it, again, it's that thing that the end goal isn't to the shelf today, right? Like, mm -hmm. cause we know we don't know enough to get there. It's yeah. like, how do we de-risk the product or get closer to what you guys want to build to win your next pitch competition, to get mm -hmm. your next angel involved? And that part of building a startup that you guys have like absolutely done now is, and I want to like get the retrospective of like, you know, building it piece by piece, brick by brick is, yeah. um, it's so hard for people when they first write down the idea to realize that you're not going to go build the house all at once. Yeah. Right? You're going to go to the hardware store, buy some of the equipment, build a foundation of the house, go back, mm -hmm. get some more, build it higher. And that's such a different journey than the, oh, we're going to go do this all right now. Yeah. And I feel like that was one of the benefits of me being young is I don't even know if I could think that far ahead. <laughs> like, I don't think I could conceptualize like truly having a, a product and a brand being sold online or in stores. Like, I was just like, I think it'd be cool to like see this 3D printed. Mm -hmm. And like when I got the first 3D print, I was like, wow, we have it. It it's exists. Real. Like, it, yeah, like that was cool enough for me. And then yeah. it was like, oh, I guess we could do, we could do the next thing, huh? Like, let's like yeah, make it work. Let's try it. We just it. knew enough. Mm -hmm. To like keep the optimism and the mm -hmm. goal and the momentum and the passion. Yeah. And that we and didn't need to know anymore. <laughs> yeah. That was about all we can handle. Yeah. Well, that's been such a cool part of it too. Yeah. Not that we always have the right next step. Right. But you two have been so trusting of when we've said, hey, this is really important. Mm -hmm. You've both mm -hmm. been like, okay, we can see that vision. We can see that we should take that next step. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's been a huge piece of what led us to do things like, hey, these 3D printed prototypes that don't actually do a whole lot that are really cool to look at, <laughs> let's take a break and just go do a deep dive into user research yeah. and see what we find. Yeah. Um, and then we, yeah, I know we had a handful of ideas at the beginning and actually the, the idea that we eventually went with, it was a li on a list of you know, 12 others that we, yeah. it, it wasn't obvious, right? No. Like, we right. landed there, but it wasn't obvious that that mm -hmm. was absolutely going to be the solution. Right. And it, it took time to get there. Honestly, I do think time was on our side. Like I, at the beginning, I was like, let's just, let's get it out there. Let's do it. It'll take a couple months and we'll have a product and we'll sell it. No problem. Um, but in the last four years, what's happened is more people than ever know about menstrual cups. Like in 2018, it was I'd say one out of every 10 like menstruators that I met um, even had heard of them before. But now we're in a unique position where most people know what it is and they know the benefits. Now we're just like, hey, what about this solution? What about making it easier with this? And they're like, yes, like we don't have to piece the puzzle pieces together for them. They can do that themselves because we've made a product that is so intuitive, in right. my opinion. <laughs> in my biased opinion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, educating someone about the problem and then trying to solve it for them is totally different yeah. than them just knowing it and you can come with a solution, mm -hmm. right? But I think we're at a point where like, I don't know. Like I said, I don't think I would change the way that anything went because time ended up being on our side. Um, and we've kind of taken it slow, but we found the right people to work with along the way. And I don't think we've given up any piece of like our values or our integrity throughout the whole process. And, um, in the beginning, we didn't just start this because we had we saw a problem and a solution to be filled. Um, we had learned so much. I mean, you can't be in this space without learning about like period poverty and learning about like the stigma surrounding periods. Um, and that very, very quickly became, I think, the largest part of our mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the just the mission and the the values. That's been my biggest lesson is just like the people, the relationships and staying true to what was the intention. Mm -hmm. I think. Right. You all helped us see that. And also 
we gained that patience over time, which I remember you saying, <laughs> yeah. it's going to take time. It, it takes time. <laughs> well, hurry, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Now we have to move right. real fast right now. Hurry yes. up and wait. And there's this, this, you know, it's rhythm of like, it's, oh man, yeah. all these things have to happen on a really crazy deadline. And then you do all your part and now you're waiting for someone else to get something done. Yeah. And it's just this like yo-yo effect, right? Mm-hmm. And it's definitely hard to deal with when you're used to something like school's contiguous, right? Like you yeah. go to school and there's a right. start of a semester and an end semester. And like, yes, you ramp into finals and they're hard, but it's not like a full yo-yo. Yeah, that's, I think that's just entrepreneurship. I think that's, mm-hmm. we're riding the wave, literally. Yep. Literally. Yeah. It's the, going like, with the flow. <laughs> the slowest and fastest yeah. experience I've ever had. It's, it's and, a lot. And I think just to go back to the early days, that I think is so cool what you guys did is you didn't stop your personal lives to do this, Mm-mm. right? Like you guys didn't throw out, like I'm going to drop out of school, quit my job right now and just chase this idea. You guys, we use the analogy like walk before you crawl or crawl before you walk, walk before you run. Mm-hmm. And you guys did that. You guys like, okay, I've got this money from the business pitch. We're going to start iterating on ideas and prototypes and do some user research. Yeah. And then we kind of locked onto a path like, okay, now we're going to ramp up and do some more development, like really heavy prototyping. And that got in the glass board's really hard stage where we had to figure out how to prototype something you could actually use safely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, a story we don't need to go into a huge amount of depth here, but Forum Labs did a cool article with us, with you yeah. guys about yeah. that yeah. whole process that was awesome. And I think like developing your tech five or 10 years ago even would have been such a harder road to develop and get the prototyping out. Yeah. But what was cool is you guys, we got through that and you guys slowly ramped into the business, like from your personal lives, right? Like yeah. You were wrapping up school, you were wrapping up uh, what you were working on um, with uh, YMCA? Yeah, yeah, I was working, so simultaneously at the YWCA, I was full-time there and full-time Sunny. So right. mm-hmm. it was, I also think it's just like taking that risk and finding the balance. I mean, that's always, yeah when we feel like we can bet on ourselves, Like that was a huge lesson. Right. But like so. watching you guys like get on the gas was so yeah, cool to yeah. see how you like slowly started putting more into it and more into it and mm-hmm, ramping sure. and getting excited personally. Yeah. And it was so much more like of a healthy ramp than I've seen some of their like entrepreneurs do where there's like, I'm going to go do this right now. And they're like not far enough along in the process to have enough meat in it to do yeah. for them every day. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's so cool to have you guys like nail that timing where like the need of you guys in the business and your ability to be in the business mm-hmm. did this and crossed over at the point you needed it to, which yeah. was super cool. There was literally like one month crossover of me still being in school and sunny, like mm-hmm. blowing up, which we definitely need to get into. <laughs> um, and those four weeks were insane. Like I literally had to email my professors the last week of college ever and be like, I'm not coming. Like I will not, I cannot attend classes anymore. Like I will be there for the finals because I want to get the piece of paper I've been working on for four years. But like, yeah, but we got to get into that whole story. Oh, I but specifically like the- remember being on a, <laughs> on a Zoom call with you all. We're going over some real like nuts and bolts, you know, design for manufacturing and what, what does fundraising look like? Mm-hmm. How, what quantities do we need to, you know, secure? And it's, you know, it gets, it's a really in-depth conversation. I think at the end, Drew's like, okay, well, I need to go take my final now. I'm like, <laughs> no rest. Yeah. It's yeah. a grind. Oh, I was between, like literally in between classes. Like I would just find a random corner and be like, okay, I got to get on this call. <laughs> and then I got to go do some exam I probably didn't study enough for. <laughs> but it worked but out. you have your piece of paper, right? I did. Well, okay. it's in the mail. It's taking forever. But <laughs> I will be receiving it soon, I think. You have a good authority. It's on its way. Yes, well. yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So we are, you know, in the story now, we've, we're ramping into Sunny, like getting into it. So what was the hardest part of the ramp um, from like what you changed in doing? And this is where I'm going to like, what roles are you both filling that you didn't think you were going to fill or like had no idea how to, but now you're like, this is what I do. Because I think that's part of the entrepreneurship story that no one talks about. That's mm-hmm. always the fun one of like, yeah. oh, you know, you're the CMO, so marketing like in your wheelhouse, but what else are you doing that mm-hmm. you've like had to pick up? And, you know, for you as well, like what is the, what are the, the fun parts? I think we're still figuring that out. <laughs> Ask fun. us in a year. Hopefully, we every time we meet, we're like, "Okay, what are your, what are your roles again?" Right. And whatever the answer is today is different yeah. six months from now. Yeah, we keep sure. adding things to that. Yeah, yeah. But I would say, well, it's funny you said like marketing's in your wheelhouse. Even that, I'm like, I just graduated. Like, I took some classes on it, um, but I don't have a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just crazy because we've had you know major companies and like marketing people with so much experience reach out. I'm like, how are you doing this? How are you getting this much engagement? And your SEO is so good. I'm like, I, I don't know. Yes, yes. I think it's like, we're just, we're just doing it. We're just figuring yeah. it out as we go. And like the experience um, that so many people said like, oh, you should no go work for a little bit and then do your company or, oh no, just go right into it. Like quit college. Like it's been such a wide range of advice. I think we've done exactly what was perfect for, for me at least. Um, 
but we're really just figuring it out as we go. I think it's so interesting. I think that's like a big piece of not just product development, but products going in the world mm-hmm. and people kind of this fallacy that there is a formula, right? Mm-hmm. Like people oh, coming yeah. to you and saying, no. like, how did you do this? <laughs> Whatever. And then we talked about, I mean, just timing alone. I mean, look at the role social media has played in, mm-hmm. in your all's company and look at what it was four years ago. If we developed the product super fast in six months, mm-hmm. does everything play out the way it does or does it not? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, think to your point, you guys being authentic and just having a mission that you stuck by and actually just doing the dang thing yeah. and one step at a time yeah. is just so critical to it. And yeah. to try and distill it down and say, yeah, we would do like the exact same thing over again. If we, you know, you turn one knob mm-hmm. slightly different, it, what does it look like? Yeah. Cindy, I really want <laughs> you to talk about like your journey with this and like yeah. what you've learned because um, I mean, you don't have even a business background necessarily, no, no, but no. I, I <laughs> say all everything. the time, Only Cindy go. is a better business person than me and I went to college for it. Like, like, Cindy's way too humble. She, oh. Yeah, like you have no. learned, like anytime we haven't understood something, you are the one to go figure it out, like nine out of 10 times. Yeah, I think it's really just been, so, so from college, graduating college, um, and that was, I think, that's when the business was officially like, incorporated as an LLC, um, was that summer I graduated. And so it was really, so to back up a little bit too, I was also thinking of pre-med. So I was also thinking medical school, lots of questions up in the air at that time. And it was kind of like a passion versus, um, societal and parental suggestion. So it really, (laughs) like, to be very honest, like that's kind of where I was. And I was at this crossroads of doing something that I wasn't as passionate about versus something that I didn't know anything about, but I was really (laughs) interested in. So I think that's been the biggest lesson was just, again, on the values and choosing to do something that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think I found in Drew when we met up was just that passion for it and the excitement and the creativity. So that's what I try to find in all the people that we work with is Mm -hmm. someone who has that dedication and yeah. And the drive, right? Like the, the, drive. this is so cool. I'm willing to spend like yeah. my, uh, not on work time thinking about it. Like this is what I'm thinking. We use the word shower thoughts, right? When you're in the shower, what are sure. you thinking about? Oh, dreams. We've gone yeah. into people's dreams. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's, that's what's you know, the, the cool part about product development. What we do is like, yeah. it's almost all so wildly fascinating that it's hard to pick favorites, but then you get ones like yours that like, it's such a different problem to solve that it is really hard for us. Like mechanical engineers, like, how do I engineer my way out of this box? Like, <laughs> I don't know what knobs to turn to make this a better experience for you guys. And like winding the clock back to the prototyping. I think it was so critical because there wasn't a right answer and there still probably isn't. There's infinite adjustability depending on who's using it because everyone's body is different. Every user is different, but that's why like the testing that you guys did and that we had to do with you guys was so important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That has been, <laughs> I joke all the time. I've had so many menstrual cups <laughs> inside of me, <laughs> many of them not so great at the beginning, <laughs> but like we do it. That's another thing that's like, you just do it. You just yeah. figure it out as you go. <laughs> and again, we had to like ask questions like, how does that feel on insertion? How does that feel coming mm-hmm. out? And like, it's really intimate, but it is. as you can tell now, like it's casual and funny for us just to yeah. like, look back at how awkward it used to be. And now yeah. that, okay, the notes, yeah, this one's this better. Oh no, we mm-hmm. messed up that corner. Break, like, right. the, breaking the stigma yeah. One, yeah. one at a time. I, no, I love that, it. And I think that was such a fun part of your story is that there wasn't this defined right answer. And there wasn't like a eureka moment where like, we got it. Yeah. It was right. this culmination of all the good and all the bad ideas that got tested and tried yeah. and the user research that drove us to like a direction. Yeah. Yeah. And like, we just knew with the goal was and it was that direction and all we had to do is keep chasing in that way mm-hmm. and we got there because you guys are persistent and passionate mm-hmm. and gave really good feedback to us of like our local shots in the dark yeah. right because there's no defined the, answer the eureka moment was i think the world validating it once you yeah. all put it out there right that, you know we yeah we did all that upfront research and said this seems to be what should address these problems in a user-friendly way that mm-hmm. speaks to the issues people are observing and you know we took a more data-driven approach to it, felt good about it, but then you put it out in the world and you just see, see right? what happens. And yeah, with the world of social media, it's you know, not very yeah. much time before you start getting feedback mm-hmm. one way or the other. <laughs> and it's been pretty well positive for you all. So yeah. Yeah. And just having people like you all, honestly, we found you at the right time. You guys were in our corner. And if you didn't encourage us, like we were so scared to put anything out there. Like seriously, <laughs> yeah. you guys helped us just have the confidence yeah. to try. Honestly. Well, I, mean, I think one thing we talked about before was, I mean, cause you guys, we should say, didn't just 
develop a consumer product. You guys develop a, a, a medical device, yeah, yeah. Uh, which comes with all sorts of hurdles, right? And one thing we've talked <laughs> about is- Little did we know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's daunting. And I think the yeah. one thing we kept going back to was the mission again of like, mm-hmm. we all believe the world's a better place with this in it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what's the, just the next step we can take to get this into people's hands? Yeah. yeah. And like you said, Ben, we spent so much time with all the data and the testing and so many prototypes and thinking, okay, this is probably a product people would want. And here's the demographic I think would want it. And here's the messaging I think we'd use. And then truly by chance almost, um, we got all that validation literally overnight. Like we had, like Cindy said, this whole plan of launching um, pre-orders or the product or or something um, later this year. Um, And it was very calculated the same way almost everything else had been up to this point. Um, But when a random video went viral on TikTok, it was you all that were like, hey, wake up and do something about it. People like your product. You guys strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, and that that was so interesting. I made the analogy earlier of like, just the the shock of something going viral on TikTok and just kind of being like, oh, huh, cool, that's happening and not being able to process it fully. Um, but you all were the ones to kind of help us, yeah. I don't know, get our foot out the door and use that um, that initial leverage we are getting on TikTok to like take it and run with it. And in the beginning, we had a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, 15 seconds of fame or whatever, like you get, you get viral once, cool, but is this a business? And I think we've, we've, like I said, taken it and made it our own and have continued to build traction. Um, not because I think we're expert marketers or whatever, but because we spent so much time making a product that people want. And it's like we said, it's so intuitive. Right. And it's, it's the mission you set out to solve a problem that mm-hmm. you had both identified in your own lives and then identified was a larger problem and sold us on the moment we met. Like half the world has the ability to use this. Like your user base is 50% of all people. Um, so it's a great market. And it was one of those, like for me, like when we were talking earlier about like, oh, how are we gonna sell this as an idea to you know the investor group or what? I'm like, it's a huge market you're chasing. And it's one that's what I'm gonna call like a blue ocean. Like there's not been a lot of innovation in that market in a long time. Like when was the like uh, plastic applicator tampon invented, if anyone knows, I have no idea, but this is, you know, 40 years old was the last major innovation in the space that is really gained traction and become popular. So I think that's the the cool part that you have this blue ocean of everyone's used to something, but does it work perfect or great? Maybe not all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think it's super cool. Yeah. And like we said, we came to you with part of an idea and like we knew these parameters more or less, like we wanted to do this and this and not this. Um, and you were able to actually make it something that works and that makes sense, which was awesome because we certainly could not have done it alone. Uh, and it's, it's the perfect example, like what our firm does is take ideas for people that have a great idea and a great problem that don't have an engineering background. Mm-hmm. You don't need to, to be in the product space, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You can find partners and people to do that for you and with you. And that's what is so empowering about like in today's environment that between Zoom and everything that like you can run a business and get it all done without having to hire those people in house and build that all in the house from ground up you can go step by step and kind of build it as you go, which has really been awesome to watch. Yeah. So that's like, and a lot of that was done remotely as well, right? Oh, and in the pandemic. In the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we met during we the met pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sunny is a pandemic baby. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it really is. It really is. For sure. And now however many months or years later, we, uh, we have <laughs> been pre-orders out now. <laughs> no, that's yes. awesome. And I think one of the questions I've got for you guys is how is the um, – transition from like, okay, we're prototyping, we're solving the problem to, okay, we solved the problem. Now we have to go like build a business and like set up manufacturing and, and all that. How has that transition been? And what do you want to share with someone else that might be like thinking about doing this? Um, how much do you really want to tell them as, as you guys said, like, <laughs> we don't want to know it all at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, I think just like how everything else has gone, we don't know until we get there. Mm-hmm. Like we, we guesstimate, we research as much as we can, but until you're in the process, you know, you just won't know what steps you need to take, who you need to talk to, but we've just kind of dedicated to it and thankfully been surrounded by people who do know or who can help us find the right person. Yeah. So. And you, uh, Greer, were one of the only business people that I knew when I was like 18, 19 years old. And I was like, obviously coming to you for engineering help, but I was like, hey, also, 
I need to write a business plan. Can you help me? <laughs> and you were like one of my first mentors. And you even told me at that time, you're like, you will never use this. And it is on a file on my computer that I have not opened since 2019. Right. But it was a great exercise um, that we have not followed a single word of. But that was <laughs> honestly a good place to start for me just to like write down all my thoughts mm -hmm. and what I thought might happen in a 30 page insane document. Um, and then from there, like Cindy said, we've truly figured it out as we went. Like, I did not think um, making TikTok videos every day was going to be a part of my job description <laughs> at all, um, even as like a, a marketing major. But it's apparently a, an important part of our business now. So we're going to keep doing it. And it's, and it's yeah. really Proven fun. To be, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like figuring it out. I was someone who was like not even on TikTok that much. So I like did not know how to make a video when, when everything first blew up on the platform. Um, but that's just one example of figuring out mm -hmm. as we go. And manufacturing, like learning all this lingo, this business jargon that, you know, you're not taught. Mm -hmm. You just kind of learn as you go. Isn't it amazing how little, like, because you were in marketing business school, like how little that actually is taught and like is condensed anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that like, I've never met someone that like went through a master's degree or business school and was like, and then when I started my first company, I was prepared. Like that is not a thing <laughs> no one I've ever, ever heard from anybody. Yeah. No, I mean, it was all conceptual. Like, I mean, that's what all of business school was for the most part, especially marketing. Because, I mean, you can do case studies and you can, you know, work with brands you make up or whatever. But until you actually do it and you can apply it, um, it was just kind of imaginary. Um, and... Anytime I can specifically use like a hard skill I learned, I'm like, oh, yes, I did learn this. And it feels so cool that I didn't waste it my time. <laughs> um, but but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't have changed anything. I definitely learned a lot of hard skills that like I would go to class and then come home and immediately apply it. Like I would learn something in an accounting class. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, expenditures. OK, like yeah. even something as like, simple as that. You know, yes. Ledger accounting and how do you account yeah. for things? Yeah. Yeah. She went to business school for both of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a team sport. It's yes. a team sport. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, that's awesome. Um, and I think it's so neat that you guys like neither of you specialize in any one of the things that you're doing, but you're both sitting here laughing and smiling about like throwing things over the fence. You're like, ah, can you handle this one? I am not so confident in mm -hmm. X or Y or Z. And uh, the business partner relationship is so critical to the early young startup. I think like being able to blindly trust the other person, like yeah. have your back and like a shoulder to cry on the debt and the bad days and like uh, someone to high five in the good days mm -hmm. yeah. and watching, you know, you guys go from, this is an idea. We're going to part-time work on this to, Hey, we're really ramping into this. Like, mm -hmm. We are like full on going into this has been such a fun thing to, to work with you guys through and, and the ramp and watching you guys like start covering each other. Like, oh, I'm going to cover this. I'm going to cover this. Like in all the meetings and mm -hmm. starting like what I call jump on the grenades. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> jump on that other. one. I'll jump on this exactly. one. Yeah. Exactly. Hope we don't explode. And I think it's so cool that, you know, you, you realize you don't have to know everything. Yeah. And yeah. that you can rely on the guy next to you in the seat next to you in your business. Or I've seen you guys pick up not just us, but other partners that you guys were working with and just integrate them into your team as if they're they're right next to you. And I think that's the the one benefit the pandemic's brought every business is that that is now so tangible, so easy to just start picking up and working on someone that is not in your business. Yeah. That's one thing I learned. Like I think one of the biggest lessons is there's always someone willing to help, which was shocking. Like even you all, I don't know how many people would have taken some 18 year old with a napkin idea, seriously. Hey, you had money. But <laughs> I mean, just enough That's to good. get us through that first bit. But, yeah. um, but seriously, like you, you took it seriously and you wanted to understand a problem that you didn't personally have. Um, and you were, I mean, you always took me seriously and gave me the confidence um, to ask for help and to, you know, feel like a, a real business person, <laughs> like feel like a real, like I was really doing something and I knew what I was talking about. And that confidence, I mean, carried over into the most crucial areas, like raising funds and selling a product. Like you have to believe in what you're doing. And you were probably the first touch points of people that like were the foundation of that for me. Well, no, it was super easy to do. I mean, you guys came in with a problem to solve and wanted to solve it for all the right reasons. And that makes it really easy to want to bet back and bet on you guys, if that makes sense. It was despite whether or not I thought we'd be successful at it, which I did at the time, but regardless, I would have tried to help because you guys had the right mission. And I think this is Cindy, your whole point of why you do the business and how you've continued to like be really enthusiastic about it all the time and be like the cheerleader is you believe in the mission. And I think that's so important to wake up every day and like love what you do. 
and like why you're doing it. Yeah. It's a practice for sure. <laughs> it's, a practice. it's a very big spiritual journey for sure. I've loved yeah. every moment of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd imagine if you look at the product that you all are getting ready to put in the world, it looks very simple. Right. Mm-hmm. And when we say things like four years, it sounds mm-hmm. insane. Crazy. Millimeters uh, is like, we were literally like at the end there, it was like, this yes. millimeter needs to change. Like, yes, absolutely. The smallest thing. True. And when you look at something like that and all of the hurdles that stood between that and getting it in the world, I could imagine if you were developing something, you didn't have a mission or didn't have this, you know, really a, a huge drive for that. Yeah. There are a lot of exit ramps that you know, look really enticing to take yeah. if you don't have yeah. that, like, that foundation of the authenticity behind the mission. We always went back to, all right, what are we doing this for? And I, I think of this all the time that like, I truly would not have been able to do this without Cindy um, for so many reasons, but even for reasons as simple as like, I have a final exam tomorrow and I'm really stressed. And it's it's those even simple exit ramps that I could have easily taken. Um, and then you throw in the mix of like, social life and family and, you know, graduating college and trying to find a job and, and having to make that decision of like, do I do this? Like, do I actually do Sunny full time or do I go with all these other shiny offers? Um, but I think the two of us have always held each other accountable and remind each other why we're doing it. And we're there for each other on the days when like we could have easily just like forgotten about it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. That's so cool. That, and that's always the fun part of like having someone actually that you can count on when you're going to need someone to tell you yeah. to don't take the exit ramp. Like, yeah. come on, we're, we're going to yeah. do this. Yeah, like for the first time, I remember like, I think it was an investor meeting or something and Drew basically was leading it and I was taking notes or something. I literally like had no comments, no notes. I was like, wow, I you can take all these meetings. Like literally we're in sync in our brains, like the exact <laughs> same thing. That was what I was going to say. So it was awesome. And it's been awesome. We can take days off and yeah. give and each other breaks. To, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And, and that's you're the, officially starting to bring more people into the, yeah. into mm-hmm. the company as well. Yes. Yep. First employees. It's yeah. Great. Hiring <laughs> people, which is like nerve wracking. I so often don't feel qualified to be doing what I'm doing, let alone hiring people. But I mean, we're reaffirmed with these new hires. Like, I think I think we're a cool, cool couple of people to work for mm-hmm. and work with. Um, but we really just want to make our space like communal um, because we know where we started not that long ago, and we didn't know that much. And we just had a mission and a passion for what we were doing, and that's really what we've looked for. And so far, with our new hires, that's worked very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking before this about Mm -hmm. how difficult hiring is, but kind of on the flip side, when you have that mindset, it may be difficult to find the right person, but when they get in front of you, it is incredibly easy to identify. Yeah, that's true. That's good. No, always. Again, you look for someone that's like, you need all the technical bits of whatever the role is, right? The management or the business side or whatever, but Mm -hmm. do you fit in the team and are you going to row in the same direction as everyone, even if the chips are down? Right. That's what you're really looking for. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. It's it's always fun to, to find that. And again, especially when we first started hiring, it was always the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're interviewing people that are either like your age or older than you and more experienced. Like, how does this all work? And then eventually you stumble into doing it. Like, okay, I just want someone to work with this cool. So I have to interview them because I need to (laughs) be able to work with them. (laughs) Right. Um, But it's, it's such a wild journey. Again, it's just like learning any one of the new skills it takes to like run a business that you guys have been just rapidly checking off the (laughs) list as you go in the last couple of months, which is super cool. Um, yeah. But no, I think the, the employee one is definitely a challenging one in the business space. It's one of like those first hurdles that there's no like going back from, mm-hmm. right? When it's, when it's just you guys, it's easy. Like, okay, we're going to do this and we can slow down or speed up. It's, it's our speed. But when you start bringing on a team under you, it's like, well, we're going. We're all yes. on the ship now. Yeah. Just sailing. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're buckled in and there's no, there's no off on this ride. Yeah. And the imposter syndrome like has been interesting throughout this whole process. And a lot of that I think is for me, I'll speak just for myself, like, is doubled down being a young woman, um, like fresh out of college. But I think we're in a unique position where we started off having to be confident because we were often talking to a room full of like older men about periods, something that the general population is uncomfortable with. And so I had to develop, we had to develop that sense of confidence very early on. Yeah, I we think I even remember it. like one of the big, I mean, we did, yeah. <laughs> like one of the big moments was like, when both of us came to that realization, it was kind of like when this investor said no for the reasons of they didn't trust our data and they didn't trust our word. Mm-hmm. Then Drew and I like really took a hard look at it and we're like, okay, 
we know we did the work, mm -hmm. so we need to speak yeah. up for ourselves. Was that um, a motivating point or? It was uh, hard, but yeah, yeah. 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 It was we just a situation it. where, you know, they, I mean, everyone has an opinion on everything, um, but we truly have had to go the extra mile to prove ourselves, improve our data, improve our product because of the position that we're in. Um, and so I think we now are really confident about what we're doing. Yeah. Because you had to be, right? Because yeah. there was no free lunch, right? right yeah. There was Correct. no just pass here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are not wrong. Oh, man. And the, just to think about the pieces of the puzzle that all have to come together is the the product itself. There is all of the, the engineering that goes behind it. But then it, there's also the piece of, you know, Sunny is the brand that, mm -hmm. that speaks to people and all of those different facets. And it just leads you to think, you know, one, you guys are such a small team. How the heck did you do it all? Um, so impressive. Uh, but if one of those are missing, what's what's the outcome, right? Yeah. And it's just, I think it's just one of those things that we we talk so much about product and mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if the idea is sound, then it should work out. And that's just not the case, no. right? There's so many pieces that have to fall in line for it to come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that holistic perspective mm -hmm. and it takes a village. Definitely. It takes yeah. a village. Yeah. We had price. help. Yeah, that yeah. Was, help. that's the answer to that is like yeah. we had help. Like when we were coming up with the idea for what this new branding was going to be, we obviously had help of like you and of Amber. Um, and when we saw the idea for Sunny, Sunny and I both were like, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like this, it, because it was an embodiment of us as people. Um, I feel like even just a reflection of my own style, my own interests, like was it was Sunny. And I feel like you feel you felt similar. And so it's always been easy. I mean, the product is something we want and we need. The brand is something that we'd buy from or embodies us. Um, so that's the one thing that's made this whole process a lot easier. Yeah. And I hate to keep harping back to the mission, but I feel like that's so true. In this whole process, there's not been much waffling. Mm -hmm. It's been the only waffling is trying to get to what we kind of all already had in our head yeah. of what we yeah. wanted it to be. It's how do you yeah. put it on paper? We right? all had the vision mm -hmm. up here of where we thought we should go. And it was just mm -hmm. getting it out in front of us, not yeah. a matter of agreeing on the actual direction that we Which thought Which I we think go. makes it easier just to ground in something. Yeah. And just because there's so many moving parts. You have to have a stable foundation. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's awesome. So where we're at in the process with you guys right now is you are looking at launching this fall. When, when is your expected, anticipated today ship date? We're anticipating shipping in December, December. towards the end of this year. Yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so we're in the middle of production and all that good stuff. And I think that's the, the next wild journey, right? We went through yeah. development and prototyping and you're getting the business set up. I think the production stuff's coming next, which is going to be super fun to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, yeah so many moving parts and vendors and things that mm -hmm. make it all work between packaging and the product itself and how do you ship it to people? Yeah. Right. right? So that's Figuring always, that out. <laughs> always the fun parts, but it's the, yes. that there's, you know, there's the product and then there's the product company that you guys are building and that having to stand up. I think that's a, a whole nother story, but you guys have tackled it the same way you tackled the product early on, which is identify how you want to deliver it, how you want it to look and feel and just find people to work with mm -hmm. that can deliver on your mission and your goals. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we have pre-orders out now and I mean, those have just totally surprised us. We, I remember we've talked throughout the last several years, like, oh, and like, the first a hundred, you know, sales will be awesome. And like, we're, <laughs> we're so far past that. It's How many crazy. minutes of the website launching did that one take? That was, I, I don't even know. I mean, it was so fast. It was so fast because <laughs> like, I think that's what exactly like you were saying, we did the research, we knew what we were doing. And so we just, needed the world to validate that, I guess. <laughs> and we got that validation so quickly. Um, and it's just such a good feeling to go back to you all and be like, Hey, we actually need to have our first run of manufacturing be <laughs> way more like, <laughs> and, like, and keep going back and saying Pump that those to you all. Numbers up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's crazy. Like we were looking at like a 5,000 unit run at first and we we're like, Oh, that seems like a lot. Like we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to have to store these in my pantry. Yeah. And right. that's like, really full of these. Yeah. <laughs> and even just what a month or two ago, we were talking about, um, oh, I could get like my little sister to help package and ship them. And now it's like, well, we got to have a facility. Like, <laughs> it's such a crazy and quick and surreal turnaround time um, for how quickly we've grown. And we got the advice a while ago that was like, you will sell a hundred cups or you will sell a million cups. Like there's no in between mm -hmm. um, because of the nature of what we're doing. And 
hope in the millions. Right? Yeah, we'll <laughs> so that's we'll see. Yeah, we'll so see. It's we'll just see. a binary thing. We're <laughs> yeah. doing good. Exactly. No, that's right. awesome. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming out and telling your story and sharing all the, all the fun ups and downs <laughs> yes, that, that it took to, to get to where we are. But honestly, I, I couldn't be more thrilled to work with you guys. It's been an amazing journey from literally an idea yeah. to a bunch of let's go see if we can figure this out to we got to go pull this off. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now we're like pulling off and it's just happening. And it's yeah. so cool to be able to tell the story. And thank you for letting us share it. Yeah, because not you. every product development story is this cool, mm -hmm. right? You guys did start from a napkin sketch and a business pitch competition. So anyone can do it. Yeah, And it's so hard for me to be able to find like examples of like, no, like really anyone can do this yeah. if they have a good idea and a good mission and they believe mm -hmm. in themselves. And like you guys did all those things and here yeah. we are. So it's so cool to be able to share that. And like, it doesn't take, you know, you'd be wealthy to start with, or it doesn't take a round to close a seven figure round no. the day you have the idea. It is step by step by step to grow into what you guys are now, yeah. which is like launching a product that is like a controlled product to lots of mm -hmm. people and, and doing it super well. Yeah. I would just say like bet on yourself, um, do your research and then like don't burn yourself out mm -hmm. because we have kept the self care and the mental health a part of our like necessary every day um, that I think often gets lost or at least the culture of entrepreneurship and startup culture, it's like it gets lost and we um, have never let go of that part of ourselves. I'd say you're completely correct there. The culture is the, not there. It is yeah. the other, other direction in most of the startup world. Yeah. I'll say I've never worked on a program that's been as much of a roller coaster as <laughs> your two's journey and I've never yeah. seen someone handle it with so much grace. Aww, so thank it, you. it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. You. Yeah, literally, <laughs> all of us at this table. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a, it's been a great time. Well, thank you guys for coming, and uh, we'll catch all of you guys next time on the next podcast. Thank you so much.